All right, number two is what do you mean when you say supporting article, a PR article or an article within the site to match a keyword or something else? Yeah, supporting article. Again, uh, maybe by now you should have already read this article. And if you haven't, I want you immediately upon the end of today's Hump Day Hangout to go read this. And this goes for everybody else on here too. Um, go to uh, look for Bruce Clay SEO, right? Look at... Um, or what, what a silo, web, website of silo architecture. That's what I'm looking for. Website, let me spell correctly. Siloing, there you go. All right, go take a look at this. This is an article that he published. Uh, this looks like maybe an updated version of it, but I mean, it's old. Uh, how old is this article with the marbles and stuff? Uh, he's got quite a few. He's, he's got, got quite a few. Of them. This yeah. is the one right here. SEO, yeah. so bruceclay.com slash SEO slash silo. It's the, 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 uh, the page itself has changed slightly like the interface or the look, but I'm sure the article is the same. And I think this article was written in 2011. I don't know if it's, I, I think, I think before that might, maybe even before that I might've been introduced to it around that time of 2011, but this is like, this is like the foundation of what silo architecture is on is, uh, this is a fantastic article. And so I would go through and read about this. And this should answer your question. I mean, I'll answer your question now, but I would recommend all everybody go read through this article. This is like foundational stuff um, that like all website silo architecture has been built upon this. Basically, this method is it's really, really fabulous. OK, so as far as what is a supporting article? Well, if you know what your top level keyword is it, that you're trying to promote. Right. So usually that's a, a commercial intent type keyword. Um, and well, there's going to be longer tail versions uh, or variations of the keyword that are more specific or, uh, you know, again, variate variants of the original keyword, that kind of stuff. Well, those can, you can optimize content targeting those other search queries or keywords, right? Synonymous terms, LSI keywords, like latent semantic indexing keywords, uh, co-occurring, uh, co-occurring keywords. There's a number of different terms that you can target, um, that are basically describing the same thing. And so supporting articles is just, publishing content that would fall within that silo, within that category, that topical category. Does that make sense? And yes, it can be published. When I talk about publishing supporting articles, remember I'm, I'm, I'm primarily talking about um, publishing content on the blog because that's your, your point of origin, right? Your epicenter, like ground zero, right? That's the golden frame. It's, that's where your money site is, is, should be your content distribution engine, so to speak. So I typically mean, publishing supporting articles in your blog, but it doesn't have to be that way, right? You don't, you don't even really need to have a blog, right? You can have a GMB website and just a GMB asset, and you can use the GMB posts to publish supporting articles and create a silo structure in your GMB, just like you would on a money site, even if you don't have a money site, right? My point is like, you can create your top level keyword post, publish a post in GMB, specifically targeting and optimize for your top level commercial intent keyword. And then you publish GMB posts underneath that, that interlink or link back up to that and daisy chain together. We talk about internal linking inside uh, the mastermind a lot, heavy hitter club a lot. Um, but again, if you interlink those correctly, so you're publishing posts that are, whether it's a, a blog post, a GMB post or press releases that can work too, but you're publishing content that supports that top level term. Does that make sense? And so again, it's about interlink and that's called adding depth to a silo right? Adding breadth, right? Or width to a silo would be adding like subcategories and then adding content to that. But adding depth to a content silo is, is adding more terms, more supporting content to add depth to that topic, right? And that, that, that's where it's almost like, and I learned this from Network Empire many years ago when I got, went through their certification program and all that stuff. I think that was in 2014 when I did that, is that, you know, if you understand silo architecture and you have your keyword set, right? Your keyword theme for that particular silo, very, it's very tight. It's, it's very relevant. Then by just adding enough depth to that silo and proper internal linking, you'll be able to rank that term. And we've seen that proven time and again through our own testing, but also like Jeffrey Smith, for example, uh, SEO bootcamp, uh, SEO ultimate pro plugin. Uh, he's freaking amazing at on page and doing uh, and adding breadth and depth to topical silos and getting results with very little off-page work, sometimes even no off-page work, just because of how good he is at interlinking and setting up silo structure and creating topical relevancy between uh, supporting posts and all that. He, it's just fucking amazing what he can do. And so again, it's very, very important, guys. That's why we, we always talk about, you know, starting with on-page, 
silo architecture is incredibly important. Then you start mirroring that stuff into your external or your, your entity assets. Um, anyways, you want to add on to that, Marco? No, that's perfect. Okay.